The U.S. aircraft carrier fleet is the pride of the country and the dreaded nightmare of any adversary. In this video, we will be discussing the largest and most dangerous class of aircraft carriers, named after the 38th President of the United States, Gerald Rudolph Ford. The Gerald R. Ford line of multi-purpose nuclear-powered aircraft carriers is slowly phasing out the Nimitz class, and has already made great strides, not only when it comes to the technical side of things, but also in its appearance exceeding the already record-breaking physical parameters of its predecessors. Compare the 1,106-foot-long and 256-foot-wide Ford versus the 1,092-foot-long and 252-foot-wide Nimitz, as well as the increased weight, over 100,000 tons on the Ford versus 97,000 tons on the Nimitz. While previously aircraft carriers were considered a separate mini-navy within the US Navy itself because of the sheer power of the equipment and the amount of equipment and personnel they carry, the Ford class has taken this to a new level. It will enable the US Navy to quickly deploy its aircraft wherever they are needed, reducing the dependence on foreign military bases to zero. The Ford class wings will be able to destroy hundreds of targets every day for weeks at a time increasing the effectiveness of U.S. military power in combat against any adversary. Let's take a look at the most significant advantages that the newest aircraft carrier has over its Nimitz-class ancestor. Increased number of sorties One of the fundamental indicators for an aircraft carrier is the sorties made per day. The Ford's design changed from steam-powered catapults to the most efficient electromagnetic system, with a new braking mechanism to stop the planes on return. This also allowed for more clearance on deck, which is a clear advantage for unobstructed aircraft launching. The Navy intends to increase sorties by 33% to 160 sorties per day under normal conditions, with the possibility of expansion to as many as 270 sorties in increasingly dangerous conditions. Now, imagine how catastrophic 200 smart bomb-carrying planes in a day can be to the enemy. Greater emphasis on the use of UAVs. By minimizing the load on the aircraft, the new catapult and braking system will allow the Ford to launch many more different drones than the Nimitz class offers. That means both light and heavy devices. Drones for gathering intelligence, delivering weapons to points of conflict, and refueling aircraft. As for aviation, the Ford can carry up to 90 aircraft, helicopters, and UAVs as part of an airgroup. Increased electrical power. The Nimitz's nuclear reactors aren't capable of generating enough power to fuel all the combat systems the US Navy needs for the foreseeable future. The Ford, on the other hand, uses two smaller but more productive reactors, providing enough power for a flagship vessel with a potential for decades to come, and an eye toward further modernization. Its power might especially be needed for directed energy weapons like futuristic lasers. The aircraft carrier's nuclear reactors could power several countries. Monaco, Liechtenstein, Andorra, and San Marino, at the same time for a year. Weapon Handling Efficiency The logistics of the Nimitz armament was designed many decades ago and was not optimized for today's smart weaponry. This was a major limiting factor in sortie speed. On the Ford, engineers markedly eased the movements of combat units stationed on the aircraft carrier and automated most functions, reducing the need for humans, which greatly accelerated vital decision-making in emergency situations. Improved radars Radars play a critical role in the life of an aircraft carrier, but the Nimitz class needs multiple radars to perform its functions from detection to escorting and to target identification. The Ford, on the other hand, is capable of replacing a whole set of radars with a single multifunctional one, which, in addition, takes up much less space. The system has higher sensitivity than its predecessor and is much easier to maintain. The smaller amount of space required for radar deployment has led to the reduction of its visibility for enemies, which is also an undeniable advantage. Enlarged Cockpit Moving the radar a little further along the hole increased the efficiency of the aircraft carrier's cockpit. As with the Nimitz, the Ford uses over 4 acres of deck space 
but its use has become much more intelligent. It makes it possible to maintain a well-balanced operation of attack fighters, airborne radars, jammers, propellers, and of course, drones simultaneously. Increasing the daily number of air wing sorties. Head start for the future. The 10 existing Nimitz-class aircraft carriers have been gradually upgraded by the Navy to meet modern threats and challenges. However, due to these upgrades, by 2005, Rand's report found that the weight of the ships had also increased substantially, shifting their center of gravity to a critical point. So much so that increasing it further was deemed unacceptable. As for the Ford class, military experts estimate that it will not have similar problems, even after several decades of active service. Reduced Staffing Requirements Personnel take up the lion's share of aircraft carrier operating costs, as thousands of people need to be supplied. The Nimitz was designed with fairly low manpower costs at the time and limited automation capability. At the same time, the Ford was designed to replace manpower with technology to reduce the number of crew needed and costs by 20%. The Nimitzes have often had to perform personnel reductions of hundreds of sailors, but the Ford is unlikely to have a staffing problem. Low Maintenance Costs Maintenance affects costs both offshore and in shipyards. Certain features of the Ford's design will significantly reduce maintenance requirements. For example, the aircraft carrier's reactors are much easier to repair than the Nimitzes. And that's despite the fact that they can generate much more power. The multifunction radar and electromagnetic catapult are also many times easier to maintain than their predecessors. These and other applications of fresh technology will come together to save the Navy billions of dollars. Lower cost of operation. Building aircraft carriers is expensive, of course. But it's much cheaper for America's budget than most of the lifetime maintenance costs. Saving on crewing, maintenance, and substantially reducing other costs will make the final price of the Ford-class aircraft carriers at least $4 billion cheaper than the Nimitz during its 50-year life cycle. Given its total technological superiority, that's a definite win. Unfortunately, even the most advanced military hardware has its shortcomings, and the Ford class was no exception facing its own problems. Back in 2016, one of the voltage regulators on the main turbine generators failed, damaging the rotors. Engineers managed to isolate the problem though, and quickly solved it. But a much greater threat to the operation of the ship is the instability of the EMOLS mechanism. The New Electromagnetic Catapult System Since it was developed simultaneously with the design of the aircraft carrier itself, the system is not yet reliable enough to be used in stressful combat conditions. The main disadvantage was the interconnectedness of the catapults. If one of them should fail, you would have to wait until all flight operations on the other catapults are completed for repairs, or suspend flights altogether until repairs are made. While experts are working on this issue, they will also have to make sure that the system fails no more frequently than once every 4,166 launches, rather than once every 400 launches as it does now. All of this is subject to upgrades and associated costs of tens of millions of dollars. However, the ultimate goal is worth it. After all, by investing millions today, the Navy could save billions of dollars in the future by using the latest technology. The most interesting thing about the Ford compared to the Nimitz and all previous aircraft carriers is the zero chance of it ever sinking. First, its displacement is insane, so even an entire ocean full of water would not be enough for it to sink. And second, only some few countries with nuclear weapons have the potential to destroy the aircraft carrier. And believe me, they really would need at least a nuclear explosion for it to go down. 
Today, the Ford is literally unsinkable, and is one of the safest and most useful combat systems in the US arsenal. The United States is the only country in the world with a fleet and budget large enough to keep more than 10 aircraft carriers in service. When it comes to the real question of cost, a simple calculation shows that building, operating, and maintaining aircraft carriers costs the Navy only 1% of the federal budget. One aircraft carrier, the Gerald R. Ford, costs taxpayers more than $13 billion. But despite what critics say that aircraft carriers are more expensive than they seem at first glance, even when the cost of escort ships is taken into account, the reality is that the US Navy would need tens, if not hundreds, of times more warships if it tried to fight conflicts without aircraft carriers. There are currently five ships in the class, one commissioned aircraft carrier, one launched, one more under construction, and two aircraft carriers scheduled to begin construction in 2023 and 2027. What will be the fate of further projects of this class of aircraft carriers is still unknown. But one thing is clear, even with its shortcomings, the Gerald Ford was a huge leap for military technology over the past 40 years, and deservedly received the status of Menace of the Seas, alongside nervous glances from peers like Russia and China, who from time to time contest the United States in superiority for marine territories. What do you think of this giant aircraft carrier? What feature impressed you the most? Be sure to let us know in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications to always stay in touch. See you soon.